Praise Lord Church. We welcome you to our online service. What a joy it is to come under the presence of God together as a family and worship His name. Amen. God is good. Why don't we close our eyes this morning and lift up our hands and tell Him, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your awesome presence that's covering our place, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We believe you are here in this place. You are here, Lord, knitting our souls together in spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in us. Hallelujah. As we gather in this place today, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Have your way. Yes, Lord. As we lay aside our own desires, sweep across our hearts with holy fire, have your way, have your way, sing, this is your house, it's your home. your house it's your home we welcome you today say as we as we gather in this place today come on sing with me holy spirit come and have your way is 
to hear Holy Spirit draw near oh God oh draw near to us we want to hear your voice Lord because this is your house it's your home Lord we welcome you Lord we welcome you this is your house it's your home we welcome Yes, Lord, put your hands together, church, and give God the glory. Let's welcome Him into our hearts this morning, into our circumstances, into our situations. Let Him have His own way in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, because His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. Let Him have His way in us. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We give in everything into your hands, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Embolden us and encourage us. Be with us and bless us, Lord, as we come with our spirit unto you. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name. You saints of God Oh sing for joy To God our strength Oh sing, sing for joy To God our strength, our strength Draw near to Him Because you are our rock, you are our strong, you are our defender. We worship you, 
We worship you. We lift up your name on high, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, sing for joy to God. Our strength, sing with me. Oh, sing, sing for joy to God. Our strength, our strength. Come on, put your hands together, church, and give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy in this place. You are worthy, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are our God. Thank you for the revelation. Come and fill our hearts with your love, Holy Spirit. We are desperate for you. Lord, we need you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. All the saints and angels, they bow.
Hallelujah. You deserve the glory, Lord. You are worthy in our world. You are worthy in our place. You are here, Lord. You are worthy. You are our King. We lift up your name on high. We lift up your name on high, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in us, Holy Spirit. Have your way in us, God. As we surrender everything, Lord, have your way in us. We give you the first place, Lord, for you are our highest adoration. Come on, church. Can we learn to tell him, Lord, you are our highest satisfaction, Lord. Nothing can satisfy our hearts in this world. Only you can because you are our heart's desire. You are our only desire, Lord. And let your desires become my desires. Let your dreams become my dreams, Lord. This is my prayer this morning. Have your way in me, Holy Spirit, as we commit everything into your hands. Take control, guide us and lead us. Even as your word comes, speak to us. Speak straight to our heart, Lord. We surrender our lives. We give everything into your hands. All the glory, all the honor belongs to Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. What a wonderful time of praise and worship. The presence of God is filling us when we worship Him and praise His name. It's my honor and joy to welcome you to our service today. It's going to be amazing. If this is the first time you're joining us online, there's a number on your screen. And when you text hello to the number, we will send you our devotional blogs, our video clippings, because we want to keep you encouraged all through the week. And we want you to know that we are praying for you. We are a church in Bangalore. So if you are ever in Bangalore, do give us a visit. We have amazing services all through the day and we invite you to join with us, praise Him, worship Him and uh, receive a fresh word from heaven. It's going to be exciting. And today we will look at something amazing, something that will feed us and strengthen us in our faith. You see, we read uh, in 1 John 1, 9, it's a popular verse. If you've been in church for some time, you probably know the verse by heart. It says, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This verse has been quoted to a believer telling him that he needs to confess his sin every time he makes a mistake. Every time his thoughts go astray, his actions don't depict Christ and his words uh, don't glorify God. Any, anytime he uh, messes up something, does a mistake, you know, says something wrong, thinks something wrong, He's got to confess it. Now, I was caught in one such a religious trap and I was fully focused on me because every time I was confessing some sin, you know, would walk on the road, oh my God, this dirty thought, Lord, I confess. Lord, this angry thought and this word and this thing, oh God, Jesus. In nine o'clock service, I'm here at nine two. God forgive me, Lord. Oh, this, this idea that I had to confess every sin in order to stay forgiven. Or else, you know, it had the potential of cancelling my salvation. It was such a huge burden. But you know what, my friend? 1 John 1.9 was not written to the believer. 
In fact, 1 John chapter 1 entirely was written to a group of unbelievers called the Gnostics. Now, those people were the ones who didn't believe that Jesus came in human uh, body, you know, in, in human flesh. They didn't believe in Jesus. In fact, they did not acknowledge that they had any sin. So they said, oh, we don't need any savior. To them, the apostle John writes and says, listen, if you say you don't have any sin, you are deceiving yourself. See, if you have a deadly disease, but you come to the doctor and say, doctor, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, doctor. And then, you know what? You're deceiving yourself because you're harming yourself. But then Apostle John says, but if we confess our sins, see, he's being very polite. See, that's called the editorial we. Instead of being judgmental and, uh, you know, uh, being a preacher with a pointy finger, he was saying, but if we confess our sins and say, Lord, yes, we have sinned. We want you to forgive us. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many times can he cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Only once. Because the first time he does it, it's all unrighteousness. Now there's nothing to confess tomorrow. There's nothing to conf confess the day after tomorrow. So it, this happens at the time of our salvation. So 1 John chapter 1 was written to unbelievers saying, listen, you have to acknowledge that you have sin. Only when you acknowledge that you have sin, the Savior can work on your behalf. He will rescue you. He will save you. He will cleanse you. In fact, that's a verse of encouragement. That's an evangelistic verse. Never meant to condemn a believer, but that, that really condemns us if we get it in the wrong way. But brother, what do we say to believers when they sin? Because as believers, we all do mistakes. Come on, let's agree to the fact. We all do mistakes in our thoughts, our words, and our actions, even after we are saved. So what do we do then? What do you tell to a believer who sins? Let's go to the second chapter. Because notice, 1 John chapter 2 says, My little children, come on. Now he's talking to the believers. Hallelujah. The first chapter, there's no beloved, there's no my, my little children. No, no, no. See, John is, is an aged apostle at this moment. And he says, my little children. So now he's talking to believers and he says, these things I write to you that you may not sin. Okay, brother. What's the secret to living a pure life? Living a life of purity and holiness. This is the secret. He says, and if anyone sins, come on, he's talking to believers. Are you ready? What is the verse you quote to a believer who falls into sin? And if any believer sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Because he is righteous, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, we are made righteous. Notice he did not say, and if anyone sins, make sure you confess every sin. He didn't do that, he didn't say that. That would have been terrifying. But he says, but if any believer sins, know this. That we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous friend. We saw on Resurrection Sunday, the last Sunday in our message, that Jesus ascended up into the heavens and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. And we are accepted in him. We are made righteous in him. If the Father accepts him, we are accepted in him. And because the Father accepts him, because the Father embraces him, we are embraced, we are accepted. This is amazing. This is wonderful. Jesus is seated at the right hand of, of the Father. And he is our advocate. He is our intercessor. Isn't this amazing? If you are a believer and you do any kind of a mistake, remember, you are not accepted in your own thoughts, in your own words or actions. You are accepted in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You are accepted in our mediator. His name is Jesus Christ. So he's interceding for us now. When I say interceding, now that gives us an idea of praying continuously, right? Praying for somebody else. But does that mean that Jesus is kneeling down in front of the Father and always praying? Because I've seen a few posters, see a few pictures where God the Father is seated on the throne. But Jesus is kneeling down right in front of the throne. And his hands are, you know, like those praying hands. and As if to beg on our behalf and say, forgive my son. Oh, forgive my daughter. Even though she's a believer, he's a believer. Oh, they're always committing some kind of blunders. Oh, forgive them, Father. No, no, no. See, Jesus is interceding for us. It doesn't mean that every time a believer sins, Jesus gets down from the throne, kneels down to the Father and says, Father, forgive them. 
for they do not know what they are doing and then goes back right up again and then sits on the right hand of the father no you see his very presence is intercession on our behalf jesus does not have to get down every time you or i sin after now that we are made believers and you know his children he does not have to get up from the throne every time we have a wrong thought or a wrong deed or a wrong a word and get down in the presence of the father father please forgive that boy you know how many times i got up today can you imagine jesus getting up from his throne every time a believer sins and then kneeling down in the presence of the father saying father forgive them can you imagine just just my sin or your sin just one person at this time every time you sin can you imagine jesus getting down from the throne oh once again 722nd time this day what is this girl doing what is this guy doing let me pray again okay father please forgive this girl please okay let me get up oh one more sin father please forgive him again sinning in his words sinning in his thoughts sinning in his actions and father please forgive him and right when he gets to wants to get up somebody else is sinning can you imagine the plight friend when i say or when we read in the bible that jesus is our intercessor he's at the right hand of the father does not mean he's kneeling down constantly begging and petitioning god to forgive us and not throw the javelin of heaven's righteousness and justice at us no his very presence is intercession on our behalf come on put that down in the live chat or take it down in your notes just write it down say his very presence at the right hand of the father is intercession on my behalf that's why i can boldly say that you can never be a job what okay we can never be a job today in the new testament i've had so many believers you know they say oh brother please pray for me i have so many tribulations so many losses and troubles and so many things and oh brother pray for me i am a job they say i am a job have you read of job in the bible i am a new testament job well friend we live in a different scenario you can never be a job why because job never had a mediator in heaven at the right hand of the father you see job was a self righteous person at the beginning of the story he was very prideful and he was full of fear and worries and he had already opened the way to the devil that's why god does not say okay satan you're asking me permission go okay go do whatever you want no 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 see god told the devil he is already in your hand who gave job already into the hands of the devil job himself but why was the devil there see the devil was kind of like an advocate so he came to god that day and he says god this guy job he's already opened up doors for me to destroy his life but you are still protecting him why you still put a fence of protection around him why are you doing that god you see when job was sinning when job was self righteous legalistic there was nobody at the right hand of god to stand up or to speak out on behalf of job and say i have died for job i have paid the price on the cross for him jesus hadn't come yet so there was nobody to speak on behalf of job and god had to say okay but make sure you don't take his life come on job didn't have an intercessor so you and i cannot say i am a job oh my mother in law tortures me so i am a job i'm a girl so i'm a joby you can't say that oh my boss is torturing me my, i i i uh, was fired from my employment today and i am going through a loss and this covid is hitting me really bad so i am a job no you cannot be a job why number one number one because job didn't have somebody at the right hand of the father a man to plead his cause he didn't have an advocate when the devil came against him but we have an advocate hallelujah but we have jesus we have a representative we have a man in glory oh wouldn't this be amazing when you and i get to heaven of course not together by your time and in my time when we go to heaven we will be intimidated perhaps we would uh, be in awe and wonder looking at oh the streets of gold and some of us would be go scratch the surface of gold true gold yeah real gold 
some angel will fly by and say from india wa? oh yeah yeah indian yes but then you will be taken in all oh, look at all the jasper and the gold and all the pearls and the amethyst and the uh, the jasper and all that is all that i can remember you know all the beautiful names of the 12 uh, gems and all the pearly gates and oh all the amazing stuff on the angels you know angels everywhere as purity holiness and suddenly you and i if we would get in intimidated to a point where we feel like out of place there in the midst of the glory of god we will see a man a man named jesus who will come down to welcome us and we will feel home at his presence hallelujah we are not job we can never be a job by the way if you claim to be a job then i would challenge you to get out of your trouble in nine months time why because job was in his time of trouble and loss only for a period of 9 months if you wait more than 9 months you're like 32 years you're saying for 32 years i'm a job not possible brother let's be accurate you know from the scriptures only 9 months of trouble for job and guess what when he came out of it he came out with double the gain double 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 so if you don't come out of your loss with double the gain in 9 months time please don't call yourself a job and in fact you know what of course i'm saying the fact that i'm saying is this that we can never be a job Oh no brother I am a joke because I went through a loss no 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 you're not a joke you're a joke okay i mean just kidding but we can never be a joke that's my point hallelujah look at your neighbor and tell them you can never be a joke because we have jesus at the right hand of the father in job 933 he says i wish i had a mediator am i how can i talk to god is he a man this is what job says is he a man that i can talk to him like this but you know what i don't have a mediator his cry is our answer we have a mediator come on we have an intercessor now what is this intercession all about now let's remember jesus is ascended to the heavens seated at the right hand of the father he is now our advocate he is now interceding for us we have a representative we have somebody who is our high priest who can speak on our behalf and just the fact he seated at the right hand of the father goes to prove that you and i are accepted and made righteous in the eyes of god but what does this intercession really do let's go to romans chapter 8 I'm going to be reading uh, verses 33 and 34. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? See, we can never be a job. The devil brought a charge against Job. But Paul says, who can do that today? It is God who justifies. How does he do that? Who is he that condemns? So Paul is saying, nobody can go up to God and condemn you. It is Christ who died. Furthermore, he is also risen, and even he is at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. See, we can never be a job. But what if I sin? Will the devil attack me, friend? You can stand up against the devil. In fact, you are as righteous as Jesus is because you are accepted in Christ Jesus. But the word here, intercession, is the Greek word "en tukano." I want you to remember the words "en tukano." n it's a combination of two words that's what i'm telling you n is actually the english i n in and tukano means to hit the mark hit the target hit the bull's eye with an arrow or a javelin shortly put hit the mark is to reach the target it's to hit the bull's eye the scripture says jesus is risen and he's seated at the right hand of the father who is also interceding for us the word intercession means to cause us to hit the mark come on all ears now look at me come on this is important jesus sitting at the right hand of the father and interceding for us means it means that jesus is causing us to hit the mark in our life in every detail of our lives in our relationship with god in our health our finances our career our calling our parenting our marriage god is causing us to hit the mark in fact jesus who is risen and at the right hand of the father is interceding for us what does intercede mean entukano what does entukano mean he's causing us to hit the mark come on this is amazing why is this amazing because the word used for sin in greek is hamartia hamartia so that's the word for sin now hamartia means to miss the mark 
See, it's such an easy definition to remember. Hamartya or to sin means to miss the mark. When we sin, we are missing the mark on the righteousness of God. We are missing the mark for the best things of God, the best blessings of God. We are missing the mark on the image of God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What's the bullseye? Glory of God, the image of God. What happened when we sinned? We missed the glory of God. It's like taking an arrow and then, you know what, letting it loose and the arrow not missing the bullseye. The arrow going off target. What was the target? To be just like God. What was the target? To have the best like God. What was the target? To have an abundant life. What was the target? What's the bullseye? To have a blessed marriage. To have a blessed career. To have an abundant life. That's what Jesus came to restore. So, to sin means to miss the mark. Come on. To sin means to miss the mark. Now, the first Adam, by his death, caused us to be born in sin. Now, what is sin? Sin means to miss the mark. That means because of Adam's sin with which we were born, we missed the mark on a blessed life. We did not experience God's best. Under our own uh, efforts and religion, we could not hit the mark. So when it came to marriage, we lived beyond, below, beneath the standards of God. When it comes to finances, we were below the best blessings of God. When it comes to health, we were beneath all the blessings of God's health that was available to us. So, by the death of Adam, we missed the mark. But here comes the second Adam. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. And by the resurrection of the second Adam. Come on, are you listening? By the resurrection of the second Adam who went up to God, ascended to the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father and is interceding end to cano for us, causing us to hit the mark by the resurrection of the second Adam. Now we are able to hit the mark, hit the mark in our relationship with God, hit the mark in our marriage, hit the mark in our career, in our finances, our health, hit the mark in our parenting, hit the mark when it comes to living an abundant life. We are able to hit the mark. Who does that? Jesus Christ, hallelujah, our risen savior, he lives to make intercession. What does intercession mean? Causes us to hit the mark. Come on, look at your neighbor, tell them, God wants you to hit the mark. Yes, to live under the first Adam means to miss the mark, it's to live in sin. But it, to live under Jesus Christ means to hit the mark. When I say hit the mark, I want you to remember that God's best blessings belong to us. See, as Christians, as children of God, God wants us to experience his best blessings. He does not want us to miss the mark. If it's marriage, he wants us to have the best marriage life possible. If it's health, he wants us to really live sickness-free, disease-free. When it comes to finances, he doesn't want us to keep borrowing. We, we are all going to come out of loans and credits and debts one day. And you know what? God wants us to live beyond and above debts and credits and loans. He does not want us to live poor. Live in lack and in fear and struggling to make ends meet. No. God wants us to live a blessed life. He wants us to have an abundant life. See, God's best must always be our target. When it comes to relationships, ask this question. Is this God's best for me? When it comes to living a life, you know, when it comes to leading a life, a career, you know, finding a career, ask this question. Am I living God's best? When it comes to parenting, You've got to ask yourself and say, is this God's best for me? Am I doing things in a way that causes me to experience God's best? See, we've got to ask this question. Is it God's best? See, many times we come with this question. Oh, is it allowed in the Bible? The question is not if it is allowed in the Bible. See, the apostle Paul says, all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. What a an amazing principle to live by. We don't do things because they are permitted in the Bible. We want to do things because they are the best plan of God for us. Don't get married because you are allowed to marry that person. But marry because they are a wonderful choice. Somebody will help you walk with God. Somebody will help you live life better. When you go to a job, make sure you believe God for the best. Don't say any job, Lord. No. Can't God bless us in any job? I'm sure he can. 
Any job you take up, the blessing of God is on you and you will be able to prosper and flourish. But that shouldn't come out of a mentality that will settle down for mediocrity. Where we say, okay, just, you know, just a few things in my life and I'll be okay, God. I don't want to be rich and I don't want to be, uh, you know, prosperous or I don't want to flourish and I, wanna, I don't want to gain attention on myself. You know, I just want to live a simple life. Simple is not an issue. But if you live beneath the best of God, well, that's sin. Because sin is not hitting the mark. So whatever we do, we've got to ask this question and say, is this God's best? See, youngsters many a times have a, a lot of questions, you know, about smoking and drinking and you know, about all the pleasures of the world. Are they the best? No. Sin offers you pleasure or else we wouldn't do it, right? Sin, of course, gives us fun, gives us a little pleasure. But then they are not the best quality. See, God wants us to enjoy best pleasure. People think holiness is no pleasure. People think holiness is, means boring. Holiness means don't do, don't do, don't do religion. Oh, boring, burden. No, 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 no. Holiness is happiness. Holiness equals happiness. Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, who sitteth in the seat of scornful. You know, blessed is the one. The word blessed there is asher. What does asher mean? It does not mean he's an asher in the temple of God. He's an asher and he's a volunteer. No, no, no. The word asher in the Hebrew means happy. So the psalmist is saying, happy is the one who lives holy. Holiness is happiness. Because while you're living holy, God gives you the best pleasures possible. What is pleasure? When, you know, some one guy goes out and he smokes 16 cigarettes a day, but then he cannot go to sleep. Why? He's coughing, he's coughing, he's coughing. And all the time he's wondering, oh, I'm going to die young. I'm going to die young. I'm going to die young. Is that pleasure? Someone who is on, uh, you know, who's high on drugs or in, or in alcohol. You think that's pleasure? No, that's not true pleasure. Because all the while he's, he knows that he's going to die early. He knows that he's opening up his body to harmful substances. He knows that he's prone to commit something horrible. You know, he's prone to uh, get into fights and his family doesn't respect him anymore. His children don't respect him anymore. And people don't want to uh, trust him with finances. People don't want to trust him at work. Why? Because he's now addicted. See, these things are not the best of God's pleasures. When God calls us to live holy, he's actually calling us to live the best life now. That's why, you know, when we answer questions like dating when you're not ready for marriage, is that okay, brother? I'm like, is that God's best? No, then let's not do it. What about premarital sex? Where, is, where does it say in the Bible? Who said that? I'm like, okay, is it God's best does that work out in God's best interest for you? No. A lot of harmful things th that are going to happen. You know, in my podcast uh, teachings, I'm, I have a teaching that's coming up. It's about uh, wait until marriage to have sex. You know, it's going to be uh, one of the most important teachings I would have ever preached. What about homosexual marriages? People ask this question. What about homosexuality? See, it's not God's best. We love people. All kinds of people. People from any background and any practice. We love them. Because Jesus died for them. Regardless of whether a person is straight or gay or queer or homosexual. Friend, God loves them. God died for them. There's, there are no two ways about it. God loves them. But their lifestyle is actually destroying them. Did you know that the rate of falling into depression, the, lay, the rate of catching sexually transmitted diseases, you know, and the rate of dying early at, at a very young age, and the rate of suicide is very high in people who have accepted a homosexual lifestyle? It's harmful. It's not God's best. And if it's not God's best, why do you want to pursue it? God wants you to have the best life. Oh, but, but is it sin? Yes. You know why it's sin? Because sin means to miss the mark. What's the mark? Mark is the best things of God. Homosexuality, it misses the best things of God. You ought to get married to a person from another gender. You know, a believer who loves the Lord. And you know what? Who's committed to loving God all their life. And you know what? Build a healthy family. Raise a healthy family. And that is where God's best blessings are. Come on, friend. This is not to condemn anyone. This is not to say who is better than who. This is about a good God who loves us and who wants us 
to experience the best life on earth possible. Best life. Yes, after this earth, we're going to go to heaven. But then you know what? We can experience a wonderful life down here on earth as well. While we are going headed towards heaven. God wants us to have the best life possible. Hallelujah. So it's about, oh, but uh, will not God love people who are in homosexuality? Relax. God loves everyone. In fact, I might surprise you. God still loves those people who are in hell. At this moment, presently. Why? Because his love doesn't change. He loved us when we were lost and he still loves us when we are his children. But, 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 but what do you say, brother? I don't get to say anything. I get to say what's in the Bible. It's sin. Sin means to miss the mark. And what does God say? Don't miss the mark. I have a representative on my right hand. His name is Jesus. When you receive him as your Lord and Savior, he becomes your representative and you are accepted in him. And you know what? Because he is there on my right hand, his presence is interceding for you on your behalf. And when I see him, I want to bless you. When I look at him, I want to, you know what, elevate you. I want to promote you. I want to give you joy. And I want to bless you in every area possible. And God is saying, when you put your trust in Jesus, he will cause you to Hit the mark. Come on, raise your hand and say, Lord Jesus, cause me to hit the mark. Yes. Cause me to hit the target when it comes to my finances. Because when we don't hit the target for finances, we go poor. We go broke. We stay in poverty. We, we stay in debts and loans and we are bound forever. Friend, let's ask God to cause us to hit the mark. But here's another way of saying it. We read in Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Because he always lives, talking about Jesus, to make intercession for them. Raise your hand and say, he lives to make intercession for me. Yes, he lives to make intercession for you. But what does that really mean? He is also able to save. What? Why save again? Aren't we saved? Yes. See, our spirits are completely saved. But our soul, our bodies, they are in the process of being saved. The work of salvation that begun in our spirits is overflowing to our souls and our bodies. And you know what? Transforming them with every new day as we come to God. So salvation is three-partite, you know. It's complete in our spirit. It's happening in our soul and it's working on our bodies. Let me say that again. It's complete in our spirit. It's happening now in our soul as we listen to the word and walk with Jesus. And it's working on our bodies. It's transforming our bodies. And when Jesus comes, we will know all things. See, our soul will be completely transformed, renewed. And our bodies will be transformed into glorious bodies like Jesus' resurrected body. But while we are on the earth, we are saved in our spirit, but salvation is still happening in our soul and our bodies. Come on, I hope you got it, right? Salvation is still happening. That's why he says in 725, therefore, he is also able to save, not just in our spirit, also in our mind, in our body, in our finances. We need some work of salvation. In our health, we need the work of salvation. When it comes to relationships, our career, our dreams, and our parenting, whatever we do, there are a lot of areas which need the saving work of God. Come on, if you agree, can, can you type amen? Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Yes, we need the saving work of God to continue in our lives. But how does that happen? Or rather, when does that happen? Get the verse again. Therefore, he is also able to save them to the uttermost. Okay. The word uttermost there is the word pantelis. Pantel is again a combination of two words, Greek word. Pan means any and every, and telis is from the Greek word telos to mean complete and finished. So, what does pantelis mean? Pantelis means Jesus causes us to be complete and finished in any and every way. Wow, wasn't that a mouthful? Let me say that again. Jesus causes us to be complete and finished. Would you love that? Yes. But it's not over. Jesus causes us to be complete and finished in any and every way. Any and every way. In your marriage, finances, health, emotional uh, health, you know, uh, financial health and 
you know our bodily pain and sickness is whatever it is my friend our career our parenting our worship our walk with him the build, building the kingdom of god our ministry any area the scripture says because he lives to make intercession for us he will cause us to be complete and finished in any and every way raise your hand and say jesus will cause me to be complete and finished in any and every way possible and when does that happen when does it happen if we've got to come to god on a regular basis notice he says he is able to save to the uttermost the word uttermost is pantalis he is able to save he is able to bring you to completion and you know to a finished place in any and every way when you come to god through him so what's the secret now what's the secret don't worry about your imperfections or the sins and the mistakes that you do even after you became a believer but keep coming to god keep coming to god every day pursue a relationship with him every day live a life of prayer every day make sure you somehow get the word make sure you read a devotion or if it's not possible you know listen to the word as you drive to work as you're working in the kitchen as you're doing your chores at home make sure you get the word you know draw near to him speak to god be in a life of communion with god keep coming to god keep coming to god what happens when you keep coming to god when you keep coming to god jesus will bring you to completion in other words he will cause you to hit the mark hallelujah the more you come to god through jesus and say god abba father i love you abba father i want to know you abba father i want to receive your wisdom abba father i want to receive your love abba father i love you more you come to god on an everyday basis jesus causes us to hit the mark jesus brings us to completion jesus brings us to a place where we are you know complete in him to a place where we hit the mark in our finances in our health in our you know life everyday activity our career our ministry our parenting our marriage everything everything my friend in any and every way but this is the fact you keep coming to god look at your neighbor tell them keep coming to god pursue your relationship with him stay close to him oh stay close to him say in his word and keep praying that must become our lifestyle come on we have an intercessor in heaven jesus rose again from the dead seated at the right hand of the father he's interceding on our behalf his very presence speaks for our victory his very presence speaks about our righteousness that we are made righteous and because he's at the right hand of the father he is doing entukano he's causing us to hit the mark he's you know causing us to hit the mark and come to a place of pantelis what does pantelis mean he makes us whole he makes us complete and today jesus is at the right hand of the father and he's working on our lives and the more we come to god that's the criteria my friend keep coming to god oh live a life of intimacy with god and the more we are close to god more the holy spirit can work on us more god can work on us and god can bring us to a completion is there somebody here under the sound of my voice who wants to see a complete salvation in their finances is there somebody here who wants god to work on their marriage wants god to work on their career here's a secret my friend keep coming to god keep coming to god and you know what jesus at the right hand of the father will cause you to be complete will cause you to hit the mark you see the first adam by his death caused us to miss the mark caused us to be born in sin sin means to miss the mark but the second adam by his resurrection causes us to hit the mark we are no longer under the death of adam we are under the resurrection of the second adam hallelujah what do we do now what's the criterion you keep coming to god keep coming to god but brother i'm not a perfect believer but i do a lot of mistakes you know what i don't even know how to pray or come on brother i don't even know how to worship god properly my worship is never flawless and my prayer is of course contains a lot of flaws what do i do that's why the scripture says who comes to god through him notice the phrase there therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to god through him why because he makes intercession for them see we pray and it's not you know for the sake of a, a religious closing of a prayer that we say in jesus name we pray we pray through jesus because you know what 
Here's a fact that we all know. Let's all agree to it. Because not many of us can pray without flaws. All of our prayers have flaws. Yes. Come on. Do you remember a time where you prayed without stammering? Well, let, let's, you know, let, let's say one day you are asked to pray in public. Man, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I don't know about you. Maybe you're holier than me. But I stammer all the time. Especially when I pray. And many times I repeat statements, you know, because those statements sound good. My prayers are not perfect. That's why I've got to pray through Jesus. Our prayers are not perfect. Many times we don't know what to pray for. And we do, many times we don't know how to pray about it as well. Come on. We pray for 45 minutes. We are, we are looking at the watch for 45 times, you know. Oh God, I want to pray for 45 minutes. Oh, I want to pray for 45 minutes. You think it's flawless? No. The other day, my daughter Karis was praying. You know, nighttime, we prayed together. And she says, finally, she's got to pray. Okay, after I do and after my wife, Karis prays. And she says, Jesus, bless my father. Bless, bless my mommy. Bless Tata. And then she says, Jesus, bless Jesus. How, how, how do you bless Jesus? Come on, but uh, that was genuine, you know. Our prayers are not flawless. There was this uh, uh, man, you know, who would pray in church many a times. And any time somebody would request for a prayer, pastor would say, somebody pray for this. He would get up and start praying. And everybody were tired of his prayers. Because he would say things like, God, cleanse the spider webs in my house. Cleanse the spider webs in my finances. And he was using the poetic language. Cleanse the spider webs in the church. Cleanse the spider webs in the life of the believer. And finally he would come, up, come to his life and say, Lord, clean the spider web loss. Clean the cobweb in my, in my marriage, in my children and everything. And finally one person got very tired, you know, okay, of his prayers. And he was praying one day, God, clean the spider web. And somebody from behind said, Lord, kill the spider also, Lord. How many web will it build in Jesus' name, you know? Well, many a times people are tired of our prayers. Don't ask your neighbor. They might say yes. Okay. But let go of prayer. Can we genuinely ask for prayer? Oh, can we genuinely, you know what, without a flaw, send a prayer request? I've had so many people with funny prayer requests now. I'm not discouraging any of you from sending a prayer request to me. But I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get the fact to you that our approach to God is not flawless. We need Jesus. A few days ago, somebody sent me a prayer request. I said, Pastor, please upload me. Upload my family in your prayers. How do I upload your family in prayers? I'm sure they meant uphold. <laughs> I, I've heard people uh, call me, you know, trying to give me prayer requests. And some, and it's happened more than once, you know. And they'll, they'll call me and they say, Brother, please pray for this situation. I'm like, yes, sister. Yes, brother, I'm praying. And they start speaking about God already, you know. Like, but Jesus is miracle worker. I'm like, yes, 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 brother. And but Jesus will do this. He's a good God. He's in heaven. He's risen again. Yes, yes, sister. And after five minutes, I'm like, you pray for me, okay? You give me a prayer request and you preach at me. Now, what am I supposed to do? But that's why the scripture says, you come to God through him. Oh, isn't that amazing? Why through him? Because he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he is our intercessor. He is the greatest prayer partner. Come on. He is there with us and our prayers are filtered through him. I want to show you something amazing. Are you ready? Come on. Are you ready? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 1. I'm going to be reading 15, 16 and 17 from chapter number 1. Every time a people would bring an offering, it has to be a bull or a lamb or if they're not able to afford these animals, they can bring a pigeon or a dove. So, here we are. Verse number 14, in fact, we'll go from verse number 14. And if the burnt sacrifice of his offering to the Lord is of birds, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or young pigeons. The priest shall bring it to the altar, wring off its head in order to bring the blood out, burn it on the altar, by the way, its blood has to be drained out at the side of the altar. And he shall remove its crop. That's the, the food bag, you know, that's inside uh, the bird. Remove the crop with its feathers. Cast it beside the altar on the east side into the place for ashes. Then he shall split it at its wings, but shall not divide it completely. And the priest shall burn it on the altar, on the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. What happens here? 
somebody cannot afford a bull or a lamb they bring a pigeon okay and this is what the priest would do the priest would wring its head so that the blood is caught in a vessel and the blood is poured at the side that's what makes the atonement that's the sin offering you know that speaks on your behalf so now blood is poured and this is what they do the the bird is cleaned okay it's cleansed so after it's initially burned they take it up again and all the feathers are removed and he makes an opening and brings out the crop from inside uh, the bird and throws it at a place where the ashes are it's about the finished work of jesus and then take the bird and put it into the fire for a burnt offering and god says that the sweet smelling offering to him now who is the priest speaking about today you see jesus at the right hand of the father is our high priest we re- we read uh, hebrews 7:25 but you read uh, the previous few verses you will read that jesus is our great high priest today he is at the right hand of the of the father as an advocate as an intercessor but also as the high priest all right now high priest what does the priest do when you bring an offering to god he cleanses it and then offers it to god he knows what's acceptable to god he is an expert in cleansing the offering he is an expert in knowing what god loves so he cleanses it up and then offers it to god and now it is accepted on your behalf and you are blessed by god you know what isn't this what happens when we come to worship when we come to pray we come with a pigeon see our worship and our prayer our daily devotion is our offering to god is our sacrifice to god but they are with iniquity in other words we worship god but then in half an hour time nice chance that you would yawn twice that's an unholy thing right come on and you would read the bible but then you would say god such a big chapter nehemiah who hai yaha smaller chapter would have been better you know i should have selected psalms today you know all these thoughts come to your mind you come to church you start worshiping god and as you are lifting up your hands you say oh am i not looking good today i think i'm better looking than the pastor actually <laughs> all these thoughts come to your mind oh, of course i'm confessing a few of your thoughts as well and you know what you're worshiping god and you're saying oh god my favorite song hallelujah my favorite song i'm going to jump but oh he stopped the song why is the worship leader doing this god i i the other brother was better you know all these thoughts are coming right when we are worshiping god come on and some of us we get up late get ready to church slow and then right as we are entering into the church half an hour into the worship we rush into the church as if we were rushing you know chased by the devil or someone you know oh where's my seat where's my seat you know we act very holy what happened when you come to pray lot of imperfections lot of things need to be cleansed but this is what the priest does who is our high priest today jesus so imagine this is you and me all right so here we are praying god god oh jesus thank you lord oh i love you lord i love you jesus I love you Lord. Worthy is the lamb. And am I not looking beautiful today? I hope the photographer comes this side. Oh, today this Sunday I want to see myself on Facebook in our church page, Lord. Oh, God. oh sorry, sorry Jesus. Sorry Jesus. Oh, wrong thought. Lord, I worship you. And I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Yes, I worship you. Why are you repeating it 20 times, worship leader? But okay, it's low. Okay, Lord, I'm worshiping you. See, all of these things are going up to God as turtle doves. Okay, imagine, imagine. All these prayers are going up. You're praying for a life partner. You're saying, God, give me like that actress, Lord. Oh, let her nose be sharp like this. And let her teeth be bright like this. And Oh let our hair be like this that I saw in a commercial the other day. Oh God do this and God is like what kind of a prayer is this man? How am I ever supposed to answer this kind of prayer? But the prayer goes it's like this turtle dove that is given to the hands of the priest who is our priest at the right hand of the father Jesus and guess what Jesus does? He takes our prayer our worship 
and he cleanses it. He takes that feather off. Oh, you're talking bad about the pastor. Take that off, you know. Oh, you're looking at your own self. You wish you were on video camera. Okay, take that feather off. Remove the crop and cleanse the prayer. And then Jesus, our high priest, you know what? Adds on his perfection. Adds on his finished work. That's why the pigeon was thrown. You know, it was placed in the ashes at one given moment. Why? Ashes speak of the finished work. So Jesus puts in his finished work and now offers it up to God. Your prayers, your worship, my prayers, my worship, full of imperfections and flaws. But Jesus takes them all up and removes the imperfections, gives his own essence and gives his own, uh, his own finishing touch and then gives it to God. And God smells the offering and he says, wow, I'm going to bless my son because he came to me through Jesus. I smell a sweet smelling savor. I'm going to bless my daughter. I'm going to give him. I'm going to show him what's best. And I'm going to deal with him in a wonderful way. And I am going to bless his work, his family, his church, and his ministry. Isn't God amazing? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, I have an intercessor in heaven. Come on, say that I have an advocate in heaven. Oh, I have a priest at the right hand of the father. And I am accepted in him. He is interceding on my behalf. He will cause you to hit the mark. In your prayers, he will cause you to hit the mark. In your worship, he will cause you to hit the mark. The first Adam, by his death, caused us to miss the mark. We never experienced the best of God's things, God's blessings in our lives. But by the resurrection of the second Adam, he is interceding at the right hand of the Father. En Tucano is causing us to hit the mark. And may God cause us to hit the mark in our finances in Jesus' name. Hit the mark in our relationships. And if your husband's name is Mark, don't hit him. Hallelujah. I'm talking about another mark here. May God bless our marriage and cause us to hit the mark. Hallelujah. God is good. So today, as we meditate on the fact that he is our intercessor, Let's remember to come to God on an everyday basis. That's a criteria, my friend. He's our advocate. He's our intercessor. He's our high priest. But what do we do now? Keep coming to God. Keep coming to God. But I'm not perfect. It's okay. Keep coming to God because you have an high priest. You have an intercessor. But I've sinned. No problem. Keep coming to God. You have an advocate. Oh, no problem. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Keep reading the word and keep believing God and keep praying and keep coming to church and keep, you know what, uh, staying in the fellowship of the church and getting involved in the ministry of the church. You know what's happening? God is bringing you to a completion. He's bringing you to Pantelis, right? He's bringing you to com completion. He's causing you to hit the mark. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell May you hit the mark in Jesus' name. May you reach the target in Jesus' name. Oh, look at your neighbor. Tell them, may you live the best life that God has ordained for you in Jesus' name. It can only happen through Jesus. Friend, you are not alone as a Christian and as a believer. Jesus is working on our behalf. How do you know? He sent his Holy Spirit to live with us. And today, as we draw near to God, the Holy Spirit is ushering us into the presence of God. As we draw near to God through Jesus, the Holy Spirit works on our, our imperfections. The Holy Spirit causes us to hit our mark. Hallelujah. Come on, God is a good God. We have a guide. He's the Holy Spirit. So I want to tell you, aim for the best things of God. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for a debt-filled life. Don't settle for any kind of a job or any kind of a person to marry. No, expect God to give you the best. Yes, God is your father. He loves you. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for second best. You are not second best. You are a masterpiece. God broke the mold when he made you because you are unique. You are a masterpiece. And because you are God's best, you deserve God's best. And because God gave his best in heaven, his only son to die for you, you deserve the best blessings of God. Don't settle down for a life of mediocrity. Don't you settle down for a career that's mediocre. Pursue God. Keep coming to him. He will cause you to hit the mark. He will cause you to excel. And he will cause you to live a life of abundant blessings. Read about this story that happened many years ago. Near the summit of Mount Washington. There was a cane of stones, you know. There was a cane of stones. And why was that? there you know why was it there and people told this person this bible teacher that it it was to mark a spot where a young girl died you know 
staying there overnight with her father the chilly cold nights in america what happened see it so happened that one day a father and a daughter decided to go trekking you know up on the mountains and they didn't take a guide they didn't know the place very well they didn't take a guide out of excitement the dad and the daughter they step out and they go up the mountains evening time came they couldn't find a hotel they couldn't find a, a place to lodge you know but while the chilly night was freezing the daughter and the dad very tired and fatigued sat down where they were because they couldn't wa- walk you know till more because they couldn't see anything because it was snowy and fully covered and they couldn't see anything clearly they waited there for the night early the next morning the dad wakes up to find his daughter is dead weeping and crying and wailing oh he's running around and just taking a few steps further he's able to catch a sight of a nice hotel what if they had only taken a few steps further the previous night they could have slept in a nice inn a nice hotel and his daughter would still be alive but you know what better yet if he had had a guide if he had had a guide that day the guide would have told him sir don't give up my daughter don't sit down here your life is not over your dream is not over yes you might be tired yes it, it might be really really tired and you know what i i i encourage you i urge you to take a step forward because i know a hotel that is so close i want you to hit the mark don't die short of god's best for your life and if they had a guide that night the guide would have told them i'm going to lead you to the best hotel in town i'm going to lead you to a place that is the safest at this hour of the night and today what my friend there are a lot of believers who've sat down and they are dying they their dreams are dying their hopes are dying their family is dying of poverty their body is dying of sickness and they're saying this is all that i think god has for me oh i think this is where i'm supposed to end but friend no you have a guide he's the holy spirit and he's telling us today keep coming to god keep coming to god keep coming to god here's the secret of a victorious christian life it's about keeping your relationship with god it's about staying close to god the, the secret to a good christian life is very simple it's an everyday walk with him it's not a sunday to sunday thing it's a good thing to come to church on a sunday receive fellowship love and and good words and you know good good message and good worship it's all wonderful it's such an important thing i agree but you know what christian life is a daily walk with god here's a secret my friend do you want to hit the mark of god's best in your finances Do you want to see God's best blessings in your marriage, in your children's life, in your career and in your ministry? Here's a secret. Keep coming to God knowing that you are imperfect along with all your flaws because at the right hand of the Father there's a man who represents you. He's your advocate, he's your intercessor and he's your high priest. Keep coming to God and you will hit your mark. in Jesus name come on lift up your hands and i pray and i declare that today as you receive this message and make a decision to keep coming to god and make a quality decision to live a life of closeness to god reading the bible listening to the word and praying and worshiping him every day of your life and i pray and i declare that you will hit the mark of god's best in your finances you will hit the mark of god's best in your career you will hit the mark of god's best in your parenting you will hit the mark of god's best in fulfilling your calling in the kingdom of god in jesus name hallelujah come on put your hands together give god the glory give him praise he is risen he is alive to make intercession and he will cause you to hit the mark i want you to stand to your feet stand to your feet wherever you are lift up your hands even as we prepare for a time of communion i want you to praise god because jesus is alive Jesus is risen and is at the right hand of the Father and he loves us. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Come on, let's lift up our hands and say thank you Jesus. Thank you heavenly Father. Thank you glorious Jesus. Thank you Lord. You're my man in glory. You are my intercessor. Oh, you are my representative. You are my advocate. You are my high priest. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. O rala bondere boko shabradi shabradi kole kere bondala. O rima mandire rika luna turi ande lia braka tura bandala. Holy Spirit, fill us, Lord. Holy Spirit, Lord, give us a fire to get back into the presence of God. O work in our hearts, a desire to know God more, a desire to keep coming to God all over again, over and over again, every day, Lord. Holy Spirit, take us, Lord. Holy Spirit, cause us to hit the mark. Cause us to hit the mark. We don't want to die on the way. We don't want to die like the daughter on the way. You lead us, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabanda, Liko, Rabati, Naduri, Andala. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your body and thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take the body of the Lord and the blood of Jesus in your hand and keep praising Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up his body and declare with me. Say, Lord Jesus, for by your stripes I am healed. By your wounds I am made whole. No more sicknesses or diseases. No COVID-19 near my home. In Jesus' name, receive his body for you in faith. Lift up the cup and declare with me. Say, Lord Jesus, for by your blood I am made worthy. For by your blood I am made righteous. For by your blood I am going to hit my mark in Jesus' name. I will experience God's best in my life. My family is safe and my life is secure in Jesus' name. Receive his blood for you in faith. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Let's thank God for this amazing time of worship and the word. What an amazing word today. He will cause us to hit the mark. He does not want us to lose his best. We are not supposed to live mediocre. We are never called to live beneath the best things of God. He wants us to experience the best. Lift up your hands. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for this amazing time of worship and the word. We thank you for speaking to our hearts today. And Lord Jesus, you are our advocate. You are our intercessor. And you are our high priest. And because you are at the right hand of the Father. Lord, we will come to God along with our weaknesses and our flaws. And we will pursue a life of intimacy with God. And Jesus, you will cause us to hit the mark. Lord, let us experience the best of God's blessings today. And in the future, Lord, may our families be blessed. May our careers be blessed. May our ministry be blessed. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Lift up your hands. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and give you grace. May the Lord lift up His countenance over you and bless you with shalom, peace all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him praise. He deserves all the praise. Deserves all the glory. So remember, He's alive and He's seated at the right hand of the Father as our advocate, our intercessor and our high priest. And today, as we come to God, He will cause us to hit the mark in our life. Hallelujah. So, remember the message. And until we meet again in another amazing service, I want you to remember that God is still on the throne. He's working on your behalf. And we are praying for you. God bless you.